Hello Serpents, hope you're doing well. And in this video, we are going to talk about GitHub dorking. So it's not going to be some basic dorks. We're going to look at advanced GitHub dorks that can get you crits or P1 bugs. But obviously the severity depends on what kind of data is being exposed. But these are the dogs that can help you really find some high level bugs. So let's get into it. As we all know, GitHub dorking can help you find specific information by using some specific operators. So we're going to look at some basic operators and then we're going to move to advanced operators and how you can combine them to find really good bugs. So the first one we have here is org and then the name of the organization you are searching for. So my target is ATT. So if I basically type that and hit enter, it's going to show me all the repositories or files that have ATT word mentioned in it. Like as you can see, this repos has this ATT. So it's showing us all the code that is related to ATT organization. But this is a bit uh, general. We can't find anything sensitive here and we can always waste our time looking through each files, right? So we have to add some more specific keywords to get better results. For example, I'm going to type an AND operator. So it's going to go for ATT organization and it's going to look for this particular domain as well that is ATD.com. I think my keyboard is not charged. Okay. So now you can see um, ATD.com keyword highlighted in this specific repos. So again, it's highlighting those repos only for the organization that is ATD. If you see anything else here, then it's probably third party and doesn't belong to the organization. So you have to carefully look for that. Okay. Now, when you see this, you just have to scroll around. Maybe you can find some more subdomains. It did happen with me that I was able to find a few new subdomains while GitHub dorking. So now we know how we can make the results a little better. Now let's make it even more better. Now let's say you want to look for a particular type of file in your target. So let's say I want to look for .json files on ADD. So maybe we can find something in those JSON files based like, like configuration or passwords or username, something like that. So. The query will be this. Everything is same. We just added a little extra path colon and then a .json extension. Now let's hit enter. Great. Now we have all the JSON files. As you can see, the target is still ATT. We're still looking for the files in the ATT repository. And we have now some files like package.json and we can see email here and some other information. So there's not much in it. As you can see, there are like only four files here, but we can open each file and look around and see if we can find something sensitive. So nothing particular in here, but I hope you're getting the point. Now, same you can do with other files. Let's say I want to look for YAML files. Then here we go. Now we have all the YAML files. Start FIO.YAML, prerequisites.YAML, values and other stuff. Again, not much results, but yeah, you can get the idea how this works. And also you can notice something like there are some host values. So when you look around this, you always find some new stuff, maybe that you didn't find while well, so domain enumeration. So it's really good to give time to it. Now let's talk about some advanced operators. So there are multiple operators like filename, language, path, sort, or created. 
archived or pushed, so there are multiples I'll list it. File name helps you search for a specific file. Names used for filtering for like configuration or build files. Now you can also use the language operator to filter by programming language. Or you can use a path operator like we did here to find specific directory paths. But in this case, we added asterisk means anything will work before the .yaml extension. That's why we got all kind of files. But you can also specify a path. Okay, now we're going to look at some really good operators or queries that you can use to find hard-coded secrets and other vulnerabilities. So like uh, many applications integrate with third-party services for payments and other functionality and these services require API keys, as you know, for authentication. So they use that API key but they sometimes hard-code it directly into the source code and you can try look for such API keys. So for example, you can find Stripe secret keys. I don't know if you guys have heard about Stripe, but this is a payment platform that you can use to send and receive money. So, so organization also use this to send and receive money. So it's pretty popular. And there is a particular syntax of the Stripe keys and you can look for that. So let me show you the syntax. Okay, so here's the query. Again, we have organization ADD and then we have a specific keyword inside the double quotes that is SK underscore live underscore. So this is a really sensitive secret key of Stripe and it is very highly sensitive. So if you find this, it, it would be a P1. Let's hit enter. So as you can see, we didn't get any results because this organization doesn't have any code or any file that contains this particular keyword. Which is good because if this is leaked, then you can control someone else's Stripe accounts and access their data. Now, there is another key of Stripe that starts with the VK and it is less sensitive than the SK ones, but still important. So you can look for this one as well. Again, we didn't see anything, but yeah. Hope you guys are making notes because these dorks are really good and they can help you find bugs. And of course, nobody can remember um, these keywords or queries all the time, right? So it's good to take notes always. Now let's move on. The next thing you can look for is AWS keys or AWS access key ID or secret key. So as you know, AWS is a cloud-based service provider and they provide API access to accounts for all types, such as S3 buckets. So authentication to this API is often established with an AWS access key and an AWS secret key as well. So if you find these keys, you can access their buckets. Okay, so we have this query here, org ATT and then AWS access secret key. So secret key is like a password. If you have access to this, you can access their S3 buckets, EC2 instances, etc. So this is a really sensitive. Let's hit enter. Um, again, we're not seeing anything, which is good because if I see something here, I, I won't be able to upload the video. But yeah, this operator is correct since we're not getting any error. We just didn't find anything in their repo. Cool. The next thing you can look for is open AI API key. So now, as you know, a lot of the organizations are using open AI key or the open AI API key for their products and services. So to power them with AI, they use these API keys and you can look for this in their source code and repositories. And if you find one, this could lead to unauthorized usage or billing abuse. For example, anyone with a key can make API calls using your paid quota, right? This is really sensitive. Okay. So now let me show you the query for that. 
Okay, so the open AI key starts with SK and then there is some random characters like B64. So there are like 48 or could be a little more than that characters. So here we have the query which will look for this SK keyword and then a dash for the organization ADD. And we just added an extra little keyword open AI. Okay, we got a few files. As you can see, this one is not hard coded. We cannot see it. But yeah, this is usually the format as you can see. As you can see, this keyword is showing me all the files that has open AI key. This got me off guard for a sec, but this is not the key. But yeah, you got the point. Let's open this one. It does mention some DXT files, but we don't see anything hard coded here, so. Anyways. Okay. Now, the next one we're going to look at is configuration and build files. So, sensitive configuration and build files often contain hard coded secrets. So, we can look for such files like .env files or .env.local, YAML or Docker file stuff like that okay so here we have the dot e and we found them mm, it says okay let's copy this one should work okay it did so as you can see we have this uh, environment file and we have a few data here which is not really sensitive now the next one is dot local dot env i forgot to mention that my keyboard's high because it's discharged kind of did not match any code okay how about dot config you can try these keywords how about okay the path was actually wrong i'm really sorry it was supposed to be config not dot config don't put dot here when you are putting in a particular path you can also look for docker files so as you can see we have this path by the way, I wanted to quickly mention that before I think file name operator was valid, but now it's the path operator that is used instead of file name. Because I tried file name and it wasn't working anymore, so use path if you want to look for specific paths or uh, specific files. So as you can see, there's a lot of uh, Docker files here depends on your target but you have to inspect them manually as well we already saw package.json so we can look for settings.py file nothing really special but yeah these are specific file names or keywords that you can try out while github dorking okay so as you can see our org operator really helped us in finding stuff related to one particular target only if you're gonna do this in the wild you can do that as well but then you have to find out if those or companies have programs like bhagwani programs or vdp or their personal hosted programs and you can report it to them but if they don't then it can cause issues because you don't know if they're gonna accept it or not so yeah keep an eye out for that 
Now let's move on to the last query. This can help you find JWT secrets. So let's say you are hunting on an application and you find out that the application is using JWT tokens, but you want to try find out what could be the secret of the JWT token. So if you find the secret, you can sign your own tokens, right? So sometimes there are secrets in the code itself. So you can find that out using this query. So we have org ADD and then JWT underscore secret or capital letters and small letters basically. So this can help you find those secrets, but as you can see, nothing matched. That's why we are not getting any results here. But yeah, don't forget to try this out. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. And if there is some more queries that you want to include, do let me know in the comment section. Also, we are very close to 10k subscribers and I want you to share my channel with your friends or I don't know, on X or Discord, whatever they can help me with it. It would be really nice once we hit the 10k subs for more amazing content. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.